Rice Jack and Wheat Jack. The bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol. <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz is trying to rescue Happy from a cavern on Neptune. As he hurries toward the cadet, a strange sound echoes in the cavern. Hap, what's that? Just one of Polidor's tricks. He's trying to scare us with sound. Corey, you're only a few yards from the cadet. And I am on another planet. But watch. You'll never reach him. Commander, look out! The gate's closing! Happy! It's no use, Commander. You're both my prisoners. We'll be back in a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Cavern of Fear. Who's there? Oh, smoking rockets. It's a walking, talking totem pole. Nope, no totem pole. Me, wearing all three of my man from our totem heads. That one on top of the other. Space patroller with all these totem heads, you look about eight feet tall. And I could see you and you couldn't see me. That's magic for vision. And every totem head has a special secret vision place that lets you see out, but nobody see in. Say, gang, have you got any of these king totem heads yet? They're more than 12 inches high from head to shoulders. Your identity is a complete secret. And those neat colors, red and yellow, green and black, a weird face in front with fang teeth, flop ears, and a beak-like nose. Got a fantastic face in back, too. Put it on and <laughs> you're coming and going at the same time. Remember, with your totem head, you can see out, but nobody else can see in. That's magic for a vision. Man, oh, man, it's terrific. Get a lot of totem heads, and you can be a walking, talking totem pole. Like my pal here. It's easy to get him to. And send for yours today. For every man from Mars totem head you want, send a rice checks or wheat checks box top together with your name and address and 25 cents in coin to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> Now today's Space Patrol adventure, The Cavern of Fear. Exactly seven minutes after the report of the robbery, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy were in Division A of the express office of the Paris Police Force. That anyone could successfully carry off a robbery in Division A was incredible. For 15 years, Sam Grady had observed the formal security regulations as chief agent of Division A, observed them faithfully, but without the slightest suspicion that anyone would dare to violate them. Yet here is Sam Grady, his head still throbbing from an aching blow, face to face with the commander-in-chief of the Space Patrol, trying to explain a robbery that just couldn't happen. All right, Grady, let's go over it once more. Everything was all right at your check-in time at 2,200 hours. You came in here and opened the safe. That's right, Commander. I took the package of Zycon pistols out of the safe. All right. You had the package. You closed the safe. You checked the code book. I started out of this room to give the package to Lieutenant Briggs. As I got to the door, I, I heard this voice. A voice here in the room? Well, yes, it, it was a big, booming voice. What did the voice say, do you recall? Well, this doesn't make sense, but I thought it said, have you forgotten something? It was a thought that might have been in my own mind at the time. I'm very conscious of security regulations, you know, so, so I turned back. Did you see anyone? Not then. As I walked back toward the safe, I was suddenly aware of a movement behind me. It seemed like there were two men in the room, and as I turned, one of them slugged me. That's all I remembered until I heard the officer in charge standing over me, shaking me. And by then, these men had disappeared with the Zycon crystals. Yes. Well, Commander, this voice booming, uh, it sure sounds like Polidor to me. Polidor? He's behind several major robberies. But by some means, he's able to project his voice to direct members of his gang. Whatever this device is, it enables Polidor to see and hear as well as to project his voice. Unless we grant Polidor magic power, this device has to be planted at the scene of the crime by human agents. I don't see how any device could be hidden in here, in Division A. And yet that voice, it was so full and powerful. 
I'll check behind these files, Commander. Maybe there's just something... a minute, Happy. Come here. Yes, sir? Is that on your shoulder, that white powder? Smoking rockets, and I just had this uniform oh, clean. Don't brush it off. Whatever it is, must have dropped in your phoenix since you came in this room. Grady, I want you to come along with us to headquarters for a brainograph test. Oh, sure, Commander. I'll do anything I can to cooperate. We'll get to the lab, have and have that powder on the uniform analyzed. Maybe it's a food to pull it on, maybe not. We won't know until we grab it, our bait. Bait? I'll tell you about it later. Come on, let's get to headquarters. Far out in space, a private cruiser races away from the man-made planet of terror. Turning from the controls, the pilot tunes a space phone to a rarely used frequency. Adjust the scrambler circuit and beam the signal in the space. Vortex aboard cruiser S-713 calling Polidor. Vortex to Polidor. Vortex calling Polidor. Polidor here. Go ahead. Zachron crystals are aboard. Planted is still on Terra as you direct. Sure. The express clerk will not be quite by I was due then, but he was being pressured by Spencer Corey. Oh, then uh, Grady recovered all right? Yes. Corey is going to give him a brain of grab test. But don't worry. What about the detectoscope button? It's destroyed. Reduce the powder. <laughs> That'll leave Corey with another mystery on his hands. Yes. Uh, Warchick, you will proceed to Neptune as directed. Sure, Polidor. Hold the Zygron for smoke at the cavern until I contact you. Hold it or out. In Commander Corey's central office at Space Patrol Headquarters, Buzz and Happy are examining the results of the brainograph test on Sam Grady, express agent of Division A. Well, one thing's sure, Grady wasn't in on the job. No, everything he told us was the truth. He wasn't even guilty of carelessness. Polidor's men had everything figured down to the last detail. Say, Commander, what about that powder on my jacket? The lab's still working on it, but I have a preliminary report. Powder's composed of several different elements, materials that might be used in electronics equipment. Well, then Polidor must have had some gadget fastened to the ceiling. The gadget he, uh, he projects his voice from. Mm-hmm. Also, it apparently acts as a view scope and sound detector as well as a reproducer. Gee, it sure must be a compact device. Judging from the amount of powder, the whole thing couldn't have been much larger than a coin. Well, some of the material may have been completely vaporized. What fell in your jacket was just the ash. Yeah, but how was it destroyed? Well, possibly by a vibration. And Polidor heard me tell you to search the room. He may have transmitted a frequency that disintegrated the device. I'd sure like to know who planted it there. Say, uh, back in Division A, you mentioned something about a trap for Polidor. How are you going to work it? It's already in operation, Hap. A group of businessmen are holding an important meeting in the green room at the Terra Hotel. Discussing a financial matter, I'm sure Polidor will be very interested in. The shipment of a million credits to the Saturn Trust Company. The green room? But that's supposed to be spy proof. Exactly. Behind the walls, floor, and ceiling is an electronic jamming device that would garble any recording or secret ticket. Even this gadget of Polidor's? I don't know. If Polidor succeeded in planning his gadget in the green room, it would be working. I had the jamming device disconnected. Polidor will hear everything that goes on in that room. How can we be sure that he heard about the meeting? I've arranged for some carefully planted leaks. With Polidor's spy set up, he should have picked up our kind of information. Mm, million credit bait. That ought to lead Polidor into a trap, all right. Mm, it's nearly 1,400 hours now. The meeting in the green room ought to be breaking up soon. When everyone leaves, we'll search the conference room. On the top floor of the luxurious Terra Hotel, Buzz and Happy wait unobtrusively at the end of the corridor as ten important business leaders pile out of the green room. As the group steps into an elevator, Buzz touches Happy's arm. It's clear, Happy. Come on. Commander, I think that last man saw us. I'm pretty sure he recognized you. I know he did, Happy. That was Nelson Kettering, chairman of the meeting. He's the only man in that group who knows we're setting a trap for Polidor. Go on in, Happy. Hey, this is some room. And look at the size of that conference table. I'll check this switch, and we'll search the room. Switch? Protective system was turned off during the meeting. To give Polidor an earful, then when Kettering left, he turned it on. Oh, I get it. So Polidor couldn't hear us or see us while we're searching the room. Yeah. We'll start a systematic search. We'll check every square inch of the walls and ceiling. It'd be pretty hard to conceal anything in this room. The walls are smooth and plain. Half. Yeah. Look up at the ceiling. You see anything up there? Mm. No, sir. Look close, right in the center, directly over the table. I still don't see. Oh, yeah. A small round thing. I can barely make it out. You put one of these chairs on the table, have you? You can get a closer look. Sure, sir. Here, I'll give you a boost. Uh, something like a large button. Uh, you want me to see if I can pry it loose? Yeah, take this metal box. 
electronically shielded like the conference room. If you get that button down, drop it in the box. Yes, sir. Now hold the box right under it so the gadget will remain in a strong shielding field. It's coming loose, Commander. I got it. Hand me the box, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Let's get back to headquarters and have the lab analyze this thing. To get to headquarters, we'll have a check made on everybody here at the hotel who has access to the conference room. Yeah. Might give us a lead on who planted that gadget. Help! Help! Gentlemen, can you help me? What's the trouble? It's my partner. I was sent up here to help him clean one of the rooms. There he was, lying on the floor of the janitor's supply room. I'll pull. Come on, Hap. Must have dropped a bottle of cleaning solvent. And fumes got him. Here. Uh, right in here. See? There he is. Wow. No wonder he passed out. That stuff burns my lungs. I, I hope we're not too late. You hold the door open. Hap, let's drag him out in the corridor where he can get some fresh air. Yes, sir. I'll take his feet from him. I ask you to hold that door open. Get your hands up, both of you. Uh-oh, Commander. Isn't the ray gun rather odd equipment for a janitor to carry? I cut the chatter. Hand over what you took out of the conference room. What makes you think we took anything out of the room? I watched you go in and I watched you come out. Now hand over that box. Come on or you'll get what that guy got. All right. Here you are. It's being smart, Cole. Now don't try anything. I'm watching you. Take a look in this box. Well, you found it, huh? Thanks, Cole. You saved me a lot of trouble. I just put the detectorscope button in my pocket. Wait, Lightyear. Hold the button off. Pull it over. Well, pouring into cadets. They found a button in the conference room, Polidor. Where are you now? In the janitor's supply room of the Terra Hotel. We took care of the real janitor with the ray gun and borrowed a spare uniform from his lock. Thank you. Yes, Polidor. You're on the top floor of the Terra Hotel? Yeah. Good. I noticed a window in the rear of the room. Use the ray gun and pull in the cadet. Then shove them out the window. A 30-story drop from in there. And you'll be out of my life for good. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. A spook from outer space. Or an Indian from a reservation on Mars. Or a mystery man from another solar system. Yes, sir, Space Patroller. You could be any one of those weird characters, but you're wearing a man from Mars totem head with <laughs> magic forehead vision. That's the special secret vision plate every totem head comes equipped with. So you can see out, but nobody else can see in or know who's wearing the man from Mars totem head. And to make sure your identity is a complete secret, it's more than 12 inches high. Colors that are out of this world. Red and yellow, green and black. Remember, you see out. Nobody sees in with magic forehead vision. Fantastic fun. You can have it with a man from Mars totem head. Get one. Get as many as you like and wear them all. Stack one on top of the other. For every totem head you want, send a rice check or wheat check box top. Together with your name and address and 25 cents in coins to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Now, back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Cavern of Fear. Buzz and Happy have been lured into a janitor's supply room on the top floor of the Terra Hotel by Blanchard. One of Polidor's Confederates. Holding the space patrollers at gunpoint, Blanchard removed the detectorscope button from a shielded box, enabling Polidor, in some remote and unknown place of security, to see and hear everything in the room. Polidor has ordered Blanchard to use the ray gun on Buzz and Happy, and then thrust their unconscious forms through the window, 30 floors above the street. All right, Corey. You heard what Polidor said. I think I'll take care of you first. You're making a mistake, Blanchard. Why should you run all the risks to pull it off dirty work? Go on, Blanchard. He's just calling. Let him have it. Okay, pull it up. 
What's that? It's just the intercom on the wall. Blanchard, look out! I'll take that gun, Blanchard. <coughs> hey, that was a beauty, Commander. Here's Blanchard's ray gun. Now, where's that detective scope? Well, Blanchard had it in his left hand. It's probably clenched in his fist. I'll get it. Not too late. Nothing but fine powder. Little I set off a disintegrator impulse when he saw his boy was in a jam. Half I'll answer the intercom. You check in the real janitor. I think he's starting to come around. We'll take Blanchard to headquarters. By the time Blanchard is brought into Commander Corey's office at headquarters, he has expressed himself as being willing to cooperate. He sits rubbing his bruised jaw as Buzz questions him. Okay, Blanchard. Have you ever seen this Polidor? No. I don't know of anybody who has. Can you give me the names of any of Polidor's agents? You might as well tell me now, Blanchard. We can put you under the brainograph, you know. All right, I'll tell you. I only know one of them, uh, Pete Vorchek. I worked with him once. Where's Vorchek now? I don't know. He's split up after a job at the express office. Oh, the Vicron theft. Yeah. Vorchek had his special orders. I had mine. Uh, but wait. But Vorchek and I got pretty chummy. He told me a couple of things I wasn't supposed to know. About the, the cavern. What cavern? It's a place on Neptune, Sector 17K. Vorchek was supposed to go to the cavern with the Zyka. And meet Polidor there, maybe? Yeah, I doubt it. Nobody ever meets Polidor. Except probably one or two of the higher ups. This cavern on Neptune, how many men are there? Probably just Vorchek now. Polidor doesn't like the boys to get together and compare notes. Unless... Unless what? Unless he's got somebody in the cavern of fear. Cavern of fear? Yeah, maybe Boychek was pulling my leg. The cavern of fear is supposed to be a place Polidor uses to throw a scare into wise guys that get out of line. Part of the cavern is cold and damp and pitch dark. The icy water drips from the walls. Polidor had these detective scopes hidden around, and hour after hour, these horrible noises boom around in the cavern. Boychek says he's seen some pretty brave guys go nearly out of their minds. Vorchek is there. He'll be contacted by Polidor. Blanchard, can you tell me exactly where this cavern is? Well, if I could see a map of Neptune, I think I could. Vorchek mentioned a couple of landmarks. Mm-hmm. The land too close, Vorchek would see the ship and warn Polidor. Well, Commander, if one man were to be dropped off a couple miles away in a spacesuit, he might find out quite a bit. Yes, but if you were discovered... Well, I think I could do a little scouting without being caught, sir. Please, sir. And, and I could keep in contact with you in the ship on a secret frequency. All right. But remember, you're volunteering as a scout and not as a one-man assault force. Turn Blanchard over to the guard. We'll blast off for Neptune. In a remote, mountainous region of the planet Neptune, Heat Vorchek advances the heat regulator in a sealed-off section of a system of caverns, then goes to a spacephone transmitter and adjusts the controls. Pete Vorchek at Neptune Station calling Polidor. Vorchek to Polidor. Polidor here. I was about to call you, Vorchek. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. When do I get away from here? I've had my hands full with Commander Corey. He captured one of my men, Blanchard. Blanchard? Yes, but there is no need to worry. Blanchard knows nothing that can lead Corey to me or to you. Isn't it right? Yes. Yes, of course. Corey, however, is getting to be a problem. He discovered one of my detectoscopes. Had his hand on it for a few minutes before I was able to destroy it. We shall have to be more careful in hiding them after this. Oh, uh, you will remain where you are until I eliminate Corey. But Polidor... Hey, it won't be very long. Let me tell you. Corey doesn't know it, but right to live. Far to the east, the Terra Five circles over the mountains of Neptune. Alone in the ship... Commander Corey sets the spacephone receiver to a secret space patrol frequency. Anxiously, Buzz waits. And then... Good Happy calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead, Hap. Blanchard's tip was on the level, sir. I've located the entrance to Polidor's cavern. Any sign of life? Not yet. Except for the airlock at the cavern opening. It looks like any other mountain in this part of Neptune. Don't take any chance of being seen. Well, I'm a good mile from the cavern, sir. Hiding behind some rocks. These binoculars, the airlock looks only about 20 feet away. Where you stand, how close can I land the ship without tipping off Vorchek if he's in the cavern? Well, there's a ridge to the north about two miles from here. If you could set down behind that, you'd be okay. All right, Hap, I'll join you. Give me your exact location. As Happy crouches behind the rock, watching the cavern entrance, he's unaware of the tread of heavy space boots behind him. As Happy looks northward for a glimpse of the Terra 5, 
A man in a spacesuit steps up behind him with blast gun in hand. Get your hands up, cadet, and away from the space of control. Where did you come from? The cavern over there. You were watching the wrong entrance. You're Vorchek, then. That's right. You're waiting for Commander Corey. Suppose you picked up our secret frequency. Oh, no. Simpler than that. What if Polidor's man managed to plant a detectoscope in the Terra 5? Polidor heard the commander talking to you and tipped me off. Make it move. Now, look, the commander will be landing in a few minutes, and if you know what's good I'll for you... I'll take care of him later. Polidor wants me to make you comfortable with the cavern of fear. Now, start walking. Entering the airlock. Kathy is forced to walk for hundreds of yards through the winding passage of the cavern. Vorchek has opened the face piece of Happy's spacesuit, and the cadet can smell the cold, dank air of the cavern. The rocky walls glisten with a greasy wetness in the beams of Vorchek's atomolite. Suddenly, Happy finds himself in total darkness and is aware that he is alone. Hey. Hey, Vorchek. Where are you? Vorchek, what happened to the light? Hey! Smoke and rockets. A wild animal. And me in the dark without a gun. It's coming closer. <laughs> Are you frightened, Cadet? All of them. Well, that's a relief. A relief? Well, sure. Now I know there's no wild animal in the cavern. That roar was just a sound effect projected here the way your voice is, by your detectoscopes. Quite logical. However, you can be quite sure, can you? What do you mean? I am far away on another planet. But you can't be certain just what might be in this cavern. Listen. Some animal may be creeping closer. Its claws scraping the rough rocks. Sure, sure. Uh, Let's hear some more of your sound effects, Polador. Put on a show for me. Uh, You are brave now. But wait a few hours. The darkness will have its effect on your reason. Your senses will play tricks on you. Your imagination will get out of control. And for the first time in your life, you will know pure terror. Landing the Terra 5 and not finding Happy, Commander Corey has made his way to the cavern searching for the cadet. Cautiously, he makes his way through the winding passage with the aid of an atomolite. Occasionally, from the blackness ahead, come strange sounds. Oh, shut up. Happy. Happy, where are you? Come in. Come in, I see your light. I, I'm back here. I'm coming, Happy. Well, what's that? Oh, I just want to blow his tricks. He's trying to scare us with sound. Corey, you're only a few yards from the cadet, and I am on another planet. But watch. You'll never reach him. Commander, look out. The gate's closing. Happy. It's no use, Commander. The cadet is locked behind the gate, and Vorchek will see that you don't escape. Look, Polidor, there'll be a squadron of space patrol ships here looking for us. Let them come. Vorchek will be gone when the Zyklon is over. And, of course, I am here in voice only. This whole section of Neptune is being watched right now. Your man Vorchek can't get through that patrol. Thank you, Commander. He can't escape in his ship, but he can lose. Not unless I'm in it. Controls are locked, and only Happy and I can operate them. Oh, well, I don't mind losing Warchek and the Zyklon if I can do away with you and the cadet. Warchek can risk being shot down by your patrol ship if he likes. I'm right behind you with the blaster, Corey, so get him up. Well, Warchek, you've been getting an earful, huh? Yes. You're going to get me out of here, Corey. Warchek, don't be a fool. It's a trick. Maybe, Polidor. But I know where I stand with you now. Come on, Corey, let's go. Right, just a minute. Open the gate and let the cadet out. Let him stay in here. I can't watch both of you. You mean you leave him here alone in this cavern? Maybe Polidor will talk to him during his final hours. Come on, Corey, let's get out of here. You go first. All right. That's the way you want it. Put... <laughs> I don't know. On your feet. Sure, sure. Now open that gate, boy, Jack. Take it easy. I was only kidding. Here's the control back of this shelf of rock. <laughs> Commander. You okay, Hap? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Hey, you've got Borchek. Uh-huh. He's riding back with us. Too bad we can't include Polidor. Did he give you a rough time? Oh, he sure did. I didn't mind the bats and the leopards, but uh, one sound really had me scared. I figured I was really off my rocker. What was it? Well, the, 
It was so real, I could almost feel it rubbing up against me. Even through my spacesuit. Brrr. Rattlesnake? No. No, it was... Hey, I thought I heard it again. Just now. It's down at your feet, huh? Well, it, it... Smoking rockets. A kitten. And it's real. Pap, don't tell me you're afraid of cats. Oh, oh, no, sir. Not when they're real. But these imaginary cats that aren't there, I can't stand the sight of them. <laughs> In just a moment, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure, which will be brought to you by Nestle's Quick for the greatest tasting chocolate milk and those famous Nestle's chocolate bars. Who is the man from Mars? Who's in that weird, spooky totem head with a face in front and another in back? Fellas and girls, it can be you. Yes, you can have this sensational totem head with magic forehead vision. Imagine, when you wear your totem head, you can see out, but nobody can see in. That's right. Magic forehead vision works only for you. When you're in that totem head, you can fool your best friend. Even your mom won't know it's you. It's easy to get your totem head because you drink that super wonderful, extra delicious Nestle's Quick, don't you? Sure. You know Quick makes the best chocolate milk in the universe. Well, just send the lid from the can of Nestle's Quick or a tracing of the front of the label, together with your name and address and 25 cents to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. That address again, Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. You'll get your totem head soon, so you can be the man from Mars. Now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are aboard the Terra 5, preparing to fight off an attacking robot ship. Fire stern torpedo one. Fire one. Surely you don't think I'm aboard this robot ship, Commander? In a few seconds, Polidor, there won't be any ship. Hey, Commander. The torpedo exploded short of the target. The ship is protected by a force field. Our torpedoes explode when they hit the field. That's right. You can't stop this robot ship. It's gaining on us, sir. If you don't act quickly, it'll ram us and blow us to bits. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Race Against Time. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, Starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy. Was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Mike Devlin. Other players were Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Bela Kovac. George Barkley speaking. Don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday for exciting adventure on Space Patrol! Space Patrol was brought to you today by Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your newspaper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.